Since the 1970s, it has been widely accepted that the moon most likely formed thanks to the collision of another planetary body in the solar system a really long time ago. And while there are other theories for the formation of the moon, none of which hold much water, like the moon, <laughs> get it? The question remains, if this really did happen, shouldn't there be remnants of this ancient planet still on Earth? Well, now scientists think that this might actually be the case, and the remnants of this ancient alien world may actually lie deep within the Earth. We're going to talk about this new study and the questions it raises, but first be sure to hit that like button, comment your favorite thing about the Earth's core, smash that subscribe button, and ring that bell to never miss a video. I'm Eric Malachite, author of The Rise of Oraseth, the sequel to The Man Without Hands, and this is Science Get. It's generally accepted that our moon formed as a result of the ancient Earth colliding with an ancient protoplanet called Thea that was around the same size as Mars 4.5 billion years ago. But don't worry, there are plenty of pseudoscience peddlers out there that claim that it's actually an alien spaceship or something. Other theories include the fission theory, which proposes that the moon originated as part of the Earth and was cast off early in its history. The most compelling evidence for this theory is that the moon's composition resembles the Earth's mantle. The idea is that if the Earth was spinning rapidly enough, it could have cast off some of that material to form the moon. But other than what was just mentioned, there's no real evidence to support it. The capture theory is the idea that the moon is a captured object, but this is extremely unlikely and can't really explain the moon's orbit the way it is today. In order for a captured moon to have the orbit that it does today, the moon would have had to have been slowed down gradually before coming into the Earth's orbit for this to be a likely scenario. Maybe it is a spaceship. Nah, probably not. The thing is, the idea that the moon originally formed thanks to an impactor event has a lot of supporting evidence. Cue the title card. This animation shows seismic data compiled and turned into a 3D image of our Earth's interior. And you'll notice that there are these masses here that seem to cling to our core. These objects have puzzled scientists for quite some time, because when seismic waves pass through them, they also abruptly slow down, suggesting that they're denser and chemically different from the rest of the material around them. They're also the largest things in the Earth's mantle, according to Chan Yuan, at least, a PhD student in geodynamics at Arizona State University. Seismologists call these areas low shear velocity provinces, or LLSVPs, which really is not that much shorter. And explanations for the formation of these things range from the idea that they simply crystallize out of the depths of the Earth's primordial magma ocean, to the theory that they might be dense puddles of primitive mantle rock that survived the trauma of the impactor event that formed the moon. But based on new isotopic evidence and computer modeling, Ewan believes that these things are actually the guts of the planet that impacted with the Earth 4.5 billion years ago. Joke's on you, you thought I was going to say something different. And that evidence comes from Iceland and Samoa. Seismic imaging has traced plumes of magma that feed volcanoes on both islands all the way down to these LLSVPs, suggesting that they've existed inside the Earth's mantle since the impactor event that formed the moon. Over the course of the last decade, researchers have discovered lavas on the two islands that contain an isotopic record of elements that only formed during the Earth's first 100 million years, making them extremely valuable to scientists. And adding to this data is a new model of the impactor event with Theo, which suggests that the event could have deposited dense rock deep into the Earth's inner regions. This impact theory was originally developed in the 1970s as a means to explain why the Moon doesn't have much of an iron core and why it's so much drier than the Earth. In a cataclysmic impact like what is suggested to have happened with Thea, Organic compounds, like volatiles like water, would have most likely been vaporized upon impact. And it's very possible that a lot of this dry material escaped the Earth's gravitational field during the event. While Theo was originally thought to be around the size of Mars, more recent work from Ewan's co-author, ASU temp astrophysicist Steve Desch, suggests that this protoplanet may have been almost as big as the Earth. Although it's worth it to note that the Earth still would have been much smaller than it is today without this material added to its mass. Now, the moon rocks that were brought back from the Apollo missions have been extensively studied. 
when they're not being gifted to foreign dignitaries, at least. Spoilers, this one was fake. And what's really interesting is that when researchers measured the ratios of hydrogen to deuterium, a heavier hydrogen isotope that is a theoretical fuel source for nuclear fusion reactors, light hydrogen was far more abundant in the moon samples when compared to rocks we find here on Earth. And this is actually really important because in order to be able to both capture and hold on to these quantities of light hydrogen, Thea would have had to have been huge. In addition to this, this massive protoplanet would have been very dry, much like our moon. Thea, the dry, massive protoplanet, would have been separated into layers with an iron-depleted core and iron-rich mantle, estimated to be around 2% to 3.5% denser than the Earth we know today. Ewan's model for Thea's ultimate fate suggested that after the collision, the protoplanet's core would have quickly merged with the Earth's, and so long as the material in Thea's mantle was around 1.5% to 3.5% denser than the Earth's, then it would have sunk into the core of our young planet, ending their cosmic journey around our core. So a massive Thea could explain the scale of these LLSVPs. These things, when added together, have six times the mass of the moon. And if these objects really are extraterrestrial, then only a protoplanet, well, really, at this point, it would have been a planet if it was the size of the Earth, like the theoretical Thea could have delivered them. Just imagine what that would have looked like on the ancient proto-Earth. If there was any life on the Earth 4.5 billion years ago, the site would have been absolutely apocalyptic. Not everyone is happy with the evidence presented, though. Cue the title card. There is some question as to whether or not these LLSVPs even exist. Some geoscientists suggest that the apparent size of these continent-sized things could be an illusion created by the models we make based off of seismic data. And it is important to note that these LLSVPs have been imaged using extremely low velocity seismic waves, meaning that they're extremely hard to detect. Barbara Romanowicz, a seismologist at UC Berkeley, and Anne DeVale, a geophysicist at Paris Sackley University, suggested in a study in tectonics last year that rather than reaching up 1,000 kilometers, these things may rise only a few hundred before breaking off into branching plumes. She also says that there may be holes in them and that they may also just be a bundle of tubes. Harriet Lau, a geophysicist at UC Berkeley, says that smaller or less monolithic LLSVPs would also be consistent with a forthcoming analysis that finds that these things are densest at the bottom. This analysis relies on two different methods to measure the depths of our Earth. One uses GPS stations that help us analyze the way that the moon's tidal pull stretches the Earth. And the other uses seismometers that help us understand how Earth's natural vibrations penetrate the deepest parts of the mantle. Harriet Lau says that perhaps the real story behind the density is the distribution depth. If these things are less massive than Ewan suggests, it could make the idea of a Thea that was nearly the size of the proto-Earth extremely unlikely. Jennifer Jenkins, a seismologist at Durham University, says that Ewan's picture is not inconsistent with what we know, but I'm not entirely convinced. This doesn't mean that Ewan is wrong, mind you. It just means that scientific teams will have to test the ideas further perhaps by looking for geochemical similarities between the island's lava that we find in Samoa and Iceland and rocks from our moon's mantle. But there isn't exactly a ready supply of moon mantle rocks to test right now, as none of the samples brought back during the Apollo program are unaltered mantle rocks. However, that may change if scientists get their wish to obtain rocks from the center of the moon's largest impact crater in its south pole. And as a matter of fact, both NASA and China are in the process of planning robotic missions to the moon's South Pole, which will probably happen sometime this decade, hopefully. The South Pole of the moon is also a leading candidate site for a future manned NASA mission to the moon. But if these things really are remnants of ancient Thea, they might not be the only ones left over from the impactor event 4.5 billion years ago. Seismologists are starting to spot smaller, ultra-dense pockets of material in the deepest portions of the mantle some of them only a few kilometers across, and often these pockets of material are very close to these LLSVPs. Jenkins suggests that perhaps these could be the sunken remnants of iron-rich cores from other mini-planets that the Earth might have swallowed, and how morbid would it be if Thea was just one grave in a planetary cemetery? Wow, that makes Earth seem pretty evil. 
or metal, whatever. If you dug this content, be sure to hit that like button and comment what you think of this study. How cool would it be if we confirm that we have the remnants of an alien planet or planets inside our Earth? And smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to never miss an episode of Science Cat. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time.